Hey there, it's Dave and no recipe required. And um, today I'm gonna do another meal kit review for you, a recipe review from Plated. This one is a, a chicken fontina. Fontina cheese stuffed actually inside the chicken. We'll butterfly it out, cook it off. We got some roasted potatoes and, uh, and vegetables um, to go along with it. We'll go through the steps, we'll see how hard, how easy it is, and uh, of course how tasty it is. Stay tuned and uh, let's go check it out. All right, let's go ahead and get started on our plated, what is this? We got chicken breast stuffed with fontina cheese. It's a fontina stuffed chicken with potatoes, Brussels sprouts, and cheese. First thing we're supposed to do is make a marinade. Now, I've got a lemon here. If you saw what I just did, I roll it back and forth. That softens up the, uh, softens up the lemon. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half lengthwise because it says we're gonna use half for the marinade and we're gonna use half to serve on the plate and you cut this other half in wedges and if you cut it in this lengthwise that looks better than if you cut it the other way lengthwise there's some seeds in there you can go ahead and pop those out I'm going to take our wedges and just set them aside for serving this is two servings four wedges makes sense to me so I'm also going to I've got juice now for our um, for our marinade I've got oregano and I've got some uh, rosemary that they sent. It says they sent more than they need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of it. We'll use the uh, the other half for, for something else. On the oregano, you want to strip the leaves by, this is the top, this is the bottom. Hold and just pull. You get all these nice leaves. Same thing on the, uh, on the rosemary. The very tips may come out, but eventually you're going to end up with the stem there. You might as well lose the stem. Since this is just a marinade, we don't have to be super fine. With our, uh, with our chop, but you do want to break it up, let those essential oils out, which is going to um, contribute more to our, uh, to our marinade. We've got about a teaspoon, maybe a tablespoon worth of chopped herbs here. You can, uh, you can build your marinade in a bowl. I'm going to do mine in a bag. This is just a Ziploc, thick, kind of thick gauge, thick plastic freezer bag gallon size. I find it's easier to do my marinades in, um, in here. I'm going to go ahead and use um, the juice, like I said, of half a lemon. We're just going to squeeze it in there. Seeds and all, doesn't really matter because we're going to leave the seeds in the bag. You can toss that. We sent two garlic cloves with us. Again, you don't need to really chop these up too much because they're going to release their flavor just by giving it a nice little crush like that. Put the knife right on top of the garlic clove. This is the sharp edge, so don't come in like that. Just go straight down or even, you know, you can bias a little bit from there. Give it a crush. If you're not comfortable with that, go ahead and use a, uh, a wine bottle, a pot, whatever you want to, uh, to smash the garlic. We've got our, what do we got? Our garlic, our herbs, our, there's something else in there, lemon juice. And then we're gonna go ahead and add um, our honey. I believe. Mm, I use my teeth. Should probably use the scissors right there. We're gonna go ahead and squeeze our honey in. We're gonna squeeze. Oh, let's make sure we get it all in there. We're gonna get our. This is where using a bowl might be a little bit easier, but you gotta clean up a bowl. This you don't have to clean up. This is white wine vinegar. We're gonna add in as well. We've got some crushed red pepper flakes. You know, honestly, this isn't gonna add a ton of heat to the chicken, I don't think anyway. So I would go ahead and add it. If you're super sensitive to heat, go ahead, leave it off. And then with my acrobatic move to grab olive oil, again, one of the few things that don't come, add a drizzle in there. Again, more acrobatics to reach behind me. Pinch of salt, some pepper. And this is going to be our chicken marinade. I think we got everything in there. Give it just a quick mix. This is where I like, again, the bag as opposed to the bowl. Our chicken is going to go in here once I unpack our chicken and show you how to butterfly it. Smooth side up, thin side to the knife. Take the knife. People have a tendency to go too low as well, so I would err on the, um, err on the higher side. Start with that tip on the side away from you. Come back in towards you. 
moving back and forth. You know, you can lift it up and check if you're going. You can always, if you need to go a little bit higher, just take the knife back a little bit and go a little higher and back in. That's perfectly fine. We're trying to make this pocket. If you screw it up, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Just um, what you're going to have to do is make another pocket. Or, you know, honestly, if this goes really sideways on you and you mess up the chicken completely, I would just cook the chicken, then use the cheese as a topping. Cook it for like the last five minutes in a hot oven with the cheese laid right on top if you don't get it stuffed properly. And then just don't tell anybody that it was supposed to be stuffed. So that's our chicken. We've got our marinade here, which I'm going to try not to touch the outside with my chicken hand. And we're going to get our chicken pieces into our marinade. Let these um, go. I'm going to seal it. I'm going to again smoosh the bag all around, get that marinade all over, get it in the pocket. And then we're going to prep our veggies. Okay, so our veg prep. I've got our leeks right here and we're going to do these half moon shapes on them. Really important, you get rid of the, uh, the bo very bottom of the leek, the root end, and any, um, and any green part. We're going to cut them lengthwise in half, then in these half moons, and then really, also really important to clean them. I've got a bowl here, cold water, we're going to throw them in. That's going to get rid of any of the, uh, any of the dirt on the leeks. Now, we're going to go over into our Brussels sprouts now. Um, it asks us to um, go ahead and quarter the Brussels sprouts. And um, if quartering the Brussels sprouts, you're going to go... Um, kind of sideways, not sideways, half, and then in half again. What it doesn't tell us to do is to uh, take off the root end of the, uh, the Brussels sprouts. I find them to be, you know, really kind of tough, so I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of that root off and just, you know, toss that. You're going to lose a couple leaves, but not a big deal. Like, look at this guy. That's a really big, big root there. You don't want that on there, so take care of that. Then, once we get our Brussels sprouts done, we're going to go ahead and move over to our potatoes and essentially do the same uh, do the same cut here. Cut them in half, cut them in half again. Kind of bite-sized pieces. If you want to go a little bit smaller, they'll cook a little bit faster, but you know, it, it is kind of up to you. We're going to roast these up. I got an oven preheated to uh, 450 degrees. Okay, so we've got our vegetables quartered and prepped here. It uh, you know, the oven didn't or the recipe didn't say what temperature to roast them at. I'm doing it at 425. I've got it preheated recipe does say critically important seasoning a little salt and pepper we're gonna um, throw on all our vegetables here I've got the um, this actually I shouldn't say all the vegetables this is the Brussels sprouts and the potatoes olive oil salt and pepper on, um, on the vegetables and this olive oil um, both adds flavor it also transfers the heat from the oven into the uh, into the veggies it's gonna help them brown up help them get absolutely delicious get them nice and coated and then I've got a sheet pan here I've lined it with a, a piece of parchment paper, which is one of my favorite tools in the, uh, in the kitchen. This is going to keep the, uh, the plate kind of nice and clean. It's not going to burn. Um, we're going to go ahead and lay the, uh, the vegetables down. If there's any of these individual leaves, just toss them. They'll, they'll, they'll burn a little bit, but not, not a huge deal if you put them in there. You do just want to make sure the vegetables are separated nicely. One layer is uh, as much as you can do. If you need to change to a, a larger sheet pan, go ahead and do that. I get a couple more of those leaves, and then we're going to take these, throw them into our uh, 425 degree oven. So I'm going to grab our chicken out of the marinade. It's been sitting probably 20 minutes or so while I've done everything. You could always do the chicken, you know, a couple hours ahead of time. That'd be absolutely fine. This recipe calls us for us to bring the marinade back into play as we're cooking the chicken. So I'm sealing the bag. I'm going to set it aside. Now this is our butterfly chicken gets a little messy because it's covered with the marinade now but we've got our butterfly chicken our um, what do you call it our pouch right there I'm gonna go ahead and stuff it pretty generously with chicken with the um, with the cheese now we're gonna fold it back over and this is gonna be now our stuffed chicken at a minimum you know I'd recommend doing a little pinching and trying to make sure you got chicken on chicken seal there. What you can also do, it doesn't recommend doing this, but you can take a toothpick and just go in and back out to kind of seal that side, seal this side, um, and that is going to hold the chicken together. Um, we'll see how it holds together. You know, maybe I'll grab a toothpick and I'll seal one and then um, not seal the other. All right, plated fans, we are in the home stretch here. 
Um, my, uh, my potatoes and Brussels sprouts have been gone for, you know, probably 15 minutes or so. The recipe says 12, but I hate overcooked or undercooked potatoes and undercooked Brussels sprouts. We just drained our leeks off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the whole paper towel over here so I don't lose a million leeks in the process. We're going to add our leeks to the, um, to the tray here. We're going to hit it with another drizzle of olive oil. You know, I think olive oil is your friend here. It's going to get the heat transferred through. I think it tastes great. It helps get the, uh, the veggies nice and crisp. If you've got asbestos hands like I do, go ahead and give it a little toss. Hit it with a, um, you know, you don't want to toss too much because you're going to start losing some Brussels sprouts leaves, but you do want to get them mixed together. You don't just want the leeks kind of sitting on the top. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab my salt. If you want to hit it with a little bit more pepper, you can do that. And then we're going to go back in the oven. And these leeks are only going to take, you know, seven or eight minutes to cook. We want to get the um, caramelized Brussels sprouts are already happening, and we want to make sure our um, potatoes are cooked through. All right, so the recipe calls for you to finish the vegetables before starting the chicken, but I think we're going to have cold vegetables if we do that. You can do that by all means, but I'd say in the last five or six minutes of the vegetables cooking, you can certainly start the, um, start the chicken. Um, I've got pan over high, medium high heat. I've got our chicken over here. Now, let me just show you without burning my towels. This is the chicken um, stuffed uh, per the recipe. This chicken has my couple toothpicks in there and hopefully you can see those. Let me get up real close. Um, you just kind of again go like in and out on um, two toothpicks. We'll see how it does uh, compared to the other one. Um, I'm a little worried that the uh, chicken, or sorry, the cheese is going to come out of the chicken. You want to go a hot pan, enough olive oil to, um, you know, fairly liberally coat the bottom. And then we're going to go down with our chicken. Um, I also, recipe doesn't call for it, but I also put another little bit of salt and pepper on the chicken. Remember we talked about a smooth side and a rough side. Smooth side is the presentation layer of the chicken. And that's what you want to go down with first. This is the one without the toothpicks. You got to go kind of gentle. Lay it down. You should hear a nice um, sizzle. You want to be kind of gentle with our um, with the chicken. We're going to go in with the other one. And this one again, you can be a little less gentle because uh, it's got the toothpicks in there. We're going to keep the heat going. You got to like not shake the pan, flip it around, or all that cheese is for sure going to go everywhere. So we're just going to keep the heat up. We're going to let it sear on that first side. I'm going to just press it a tiny bit to make sure it's in contact with the pan. I'm going to go wash my cutting board because you don't really want to do anything with, um, with the chicken. All right, let's go ahead and see how we're doing. So one of the um, one things you may encounter is a little bit of stickiness particularly if that cheese is leaking out. So you may have to give it just a gentle fry. If, um, if that happens, I would go ahead and add a little bit more oil to the pan. Looks like this other one is leaking some cheese. I already fried this guy out, so we're gonna go ahead and turn it. This is the, um, yeah, that brownness. Um, honestly, it's a bit of the um, result of the marinade, um, the honey and the sugar in the honey will tend to burn quicker than anything else. So that's what that is. That's perfectly fine. That's not, you know, it's not burnt. This guy, again, nice and brown. You've got to be a little more gentle. This is the one without the toothpick. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit and let this go. Because we do have to cook um, all the way through and make sure there's no pink on the inside of the, uh, inside of the chicken. One of the things I forgot to do, it suggests you take the marinade that we reserved earlier and go ahead, pour it into our chicken. Which actually, with this style, makes a lot of sense. There's going to be, obviously, flavor in there. But then that's also going to create um, a sauce, and it's going to create some steam, which is going to help cook our chicken down. Now, I'd be mindful, we're going to have big chunks of garlic in here. I wouldn't serve somebody a big chunk of garlic like that. So as we go ahead and serve it, we're going to want to make sure we don't 
do that when we pull the big garlic pieces out. We're gonna let this go. We're getting kind of a medium heat now because you don't want uh, you want you don't want the, brown, the bottom to burn um, until the chicken's cooked through. All right, so my chicken and the sauce down in the um, in the bottom. You can see how brown it's getting. Not yet burned, but if I keep going like this, it is going to get burned. And you know, I didn't think this chicken was really cooked all the way through. I got a meat thermometer here, and it's getting me to like 130 or so. So I think we're going to have some uh, some problems serving this until we go ahead and take a cover, and I'm going to find a cover. This is not a cover; it's a Scott splash guard. But I'm going to go ahead and find a cover for the pan. If your chicken is not yet cooked. I'm going to turn the heat down low, I'm going to cover it, it's going to create a little bit of steam in there, kind of an oven effect. You won't get any more caramelization on the bottom so it won't burn, and the heat will cook that chicken through. What's probably going to happen is I can see I, I got some, um, some cheese coming out of this, uh, this guy already. We're probably going to lose the cheese on, um, on this side. Um, but I do think, I'll check it once more, yeah, I do think it's necessary to get our chicken up to uh, up to temperature. Okay, so my vegetables went for about 15 minutes or so. It's time to add our peas. May, you know, important on the vegetables, make sure they're all tender. Then go ahead and add the peas here. Um, the peas, you know, they don't even really need to cook. I tasted them before. These are super fresh, super delicious peas. And, um, you know, the residual heat from the vegetables, the Brussels sprouts and the potatoes are going to cook them. We can see, look at these Brussels sprouts. They've, um, they've crisped up nicely, particularly over on this, um, on the outside here with those leaves. Nice brown. There's plenty of heat in the in the uh, in the pan to cook the peas. Go ahead, taste it. If you want to add some salt, you want to add some pepper, or even a little bit of olive oil, you're good to go. Other than this, um, let's just keep them warm while we finish our chicken. All right, so I let my chicken go for another five minutes or so, um, covered, and that again creates more steam in there. It's going to cook the chicken through. I think we are good. I checked it on the uh, on the meat thermometer, and it looks good to me. We did um, lose some cheese, honestly. If I were to redo the recipe, I would do it every time um, with the uh, toothpick. And I would also sear both sides, probably throw the entire pan. This is an oven-proof pan, metal handle, into the oven to cook with the vegetables for maybe the last five or seven minutes to get cooking heat from the, uh, from the top and the bottom. Let's go ahead and, um, actually, I gotta take these, I'm gonna pull, move them over to cutting board, let them rest for a few minutes. All right, folks, so I let our chicken rest a little bit probably five or six minutes or so. I'm gonna go ahead and spoon out our veggies around the plate. Now, again, if I had to do this recipe again, I would definitely plate up, um, or sorry, toothpick up that chicken so it doesn't um, kind of spill out. I would also um, cook it a little bit in the oven. Um, I think that's gonna give it a better chance of cooking through more quickly without the chicken le cheese leaking out. But honestly, we didn't do that bad. Just a little bit came out. We'll throw our chicken on there, wipe our plate, do our couple lemon wedges. You know, I might even take these and um, immediately hit the, uh, the vegetables with a little bit of lemon. That looks like a great dish. Um, let me find a fork and taste it. My fork is hiding under, a, uh, under another plate. We're gonna go ahead and slice our chicken up. You can see that cheese in there. You can see the uh, chicken, yeah, there might be actually even a little bit of um, rawness on the edge there. So I would definitely, again, if I was doing it again, cook it off in the oven with the toothpicks. Let me get some cheese on that chicken. Okay, it tastes quite nice. Again, cooking could use a little bit um, more time. Vegetables are fresh, potatoes are good. I like the little option of the additional lemon. Again, good dish. I would um, suggest some changes on the recipes. Uh, sorry, with the directions. Go ahead and do that, and you're good to go. I'll see you next time on No Recipe Required. All right, so this was plated It's Chicken Fontina stuffed chicken breast. I like the concept. I do stuffed chicken breasts every once in a while, and I actually really like them. This one. I think it's a little bit challenging for a, for a novice cook, and I don't know that the recipe card was written all that well. I think you gotta cook the chicken for a little bit longer, I'd probably do a few things different. Check out the video, if you follow those, I think it's gonna turn out well for you. If you're interested in plated, go ahead and check the link in the, um, in the description below, and don't forget to subscribe.